Hood Lake to McCraney Lake, 1400 meters. But it doesn't say, oh there, it says the meanest link up top. See? It starts again, like I've never been away. Off I go. Feel it rising like the fire. Day nine, we're on McCraney Lake this morning. It's cold, but it's nice. Sunny, hanging out here with the crew and uh, drinking morning coffee. And only one more day of the camera after this and I can <laughs> go on my merry way. <laughs> it's very trying at times. Uh. This is this was actually a really good uh, campsite to camp on in that windstorm yesterday because we were on uh, the lee side of the wind, if you will, so we were protected quite well. But there are some trees that were swaying uh, pretty precariously yesterday, so there's actually a, a very large hemlock back there that looks like it might come down one of these days. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this is a great campsite, and actually. Um, across the way is a portage up to Clara Lake and uh, all night long I could hear water cascading down the stream and I've been over there numerous times taking like little pretty pictures of the water cascading down falls and not very successfully because the water level has been quite low but now I can hear the water gushing so uh, there's obviously a lot of water there so it should make some for some really good pictures good good photography later on so I think we'll go over there. Today you'll get a nice light on it too. Yeah so after we come back from uh, Hoodlum Falls, maybe I'll we'll go over there, maybe a bunch of us will go over there and we'll get some pictures. Maybe we'll even see a wolf or two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is the same spot I saw a wolf uh, chase a deer into the lake uh, two years ago. And uh, that was pretty exciting stuff. Uh, yeah, so we're just making uh, English muffins with pea meal, bacon and cheese. Cheddar cheese. Real cheddar cheese slices. How many slices? Only 11 for some reason. The package doesn't come with a dozen. I don't think they could count to 12, so they, it's 11. <laughs> wow, real pea meal bacon over fire. Yum, yum, yum. <laughs> I've been really like fat around the new. Yeah, like a lot easier. <laughs> potty stash. It's not crying. <laughs> potty stash. <laughs> no more. Are we there yet? <laughs> Thank 
think. <laughs> Cranny, it's Saturday, day nine, and uh, we're gonna retrace some of the meanest link route that we did years ago to a place we nicknamed Hoodlum Falls on Mink Creek, which is not an official canoe route. But uh, we are gonna be going to a portage that we reopened many years ago, and since then the park has vetted and signed, and uh, you'll see that shortly. I'm on the meanest link again for a few hours. <laughs> Great area of the park to be in. There's no one around, good trail. First day of fall, right on cue. Beautiful, cool temps, warm sunshine, slow moving clouds, calm waters. Perfect setting for a, a trip through the back country. Yeah, there's a big mud hill up here, a big mud slide. Probably gonna be nasty because it's been so wet. Oh, there goes my dry feet. <laughs> uh. This is all you see in the Algonquin Park. Good way to stay warm in the fall. That was 
It wasn't too bad. It was pretty good actually. There was hardly any blowdowns. A bit muddy in places, but uh, it was pretty good. Now it's more of a sliding road than we did. Is there a sign on it? Oh, here's the sign right here. Does this say meanest link on it? Bear, uh, I can't read it. It says Hood Lake. Hood. Hood Lake to McCraney Lake, 1400 meters. But it doesn't say, oh there, it says the meanest link up top. See? Oh, there's some of our flagging. Son of a gun. Where? Some of our original flagging right there. With pink. Right the bed. And just on the other side of the street. Oh. I'd seen one along the way. Yeah, but that had the, the, uh, oh, black. the black in it. It was there. So we're at the end of Hood Lake here, and uh, from here on in, we we're on foot. No more carrying canoes through the forest. Hood Lake to the Big East River, 1,089 meters. That's an odd number. Let's get it rounded off to 1,090. <laughs> oh, nice landing. I like this. This is very pretty. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Look at that, the color's starting to come out in the hills. There's there's change happening. That's beautiful, that's pretty. Some pictures. And they don't show up on the camera. This group of guys, uh, there were six of us. It's Mark Scarlett, John Scarlett, James Black, AKA Jimmy Blackleg, Jeff McMurtry of Jeff's Maps, Scott Rogers, and myself, Mark Rubino. We wanted to do one really phenomenal uh, canoe trip through Algonquin, and so we picked the Mina Slink, which is a pretty epic canoe trip that the staff at the Algonquin Outfitters dreamed up years and years ago. Unfortunately, uh, one of the members of the group uh, passed away last year, uh, or actually the year before last. Uh, that was John Scarlett. We wanted to get together with some of the family and friends of John and uh, celebrate his life. In, a, in one of his uh, places that was special, that was dear to his heart, and that was Algonquin Park. There's a babe in a cradle rock by a ghost With a rage that cut the cradle's ties In the dead of night, a candle cursed a thorn The weary out a boy and dream were born. Those that seek for ways to kill the wild. Fear the kind who cut the quarter mile when they claim the words to speak in time to deny the cause that carried out the crime. There's a babe in a cradle rocked by ghosts. With a rage that cut the cradle's ties In the dead of night, a candle cursed a thorn The weary out, the boy and dream were born In a final hour, we hide and 
take retreat before we step aside for the dreams in which we one day come to find and lift the veil bestowed upon the blind Haya Dam on the Nipissing River Many miles to the north of where I sit, beside our big welded steel box stove, I dream of a portage far upstream from where this small river joins the frolicking Petawawa. Loggers came here with horses on a long tote road, built a dam for flushing saw logs to the Ottawa. Like canoes passing without seeing the bull moose standing belly deep under shoreline cedars, no one notices how this trail cuts across one corner of the moss-covered mounds outlining the dining hall. Farther along, if you explore the young forest on both sides, you may find the cook stove and the unbolted cast iron plates that, if assembled, could heat a large, uninsulated log building. It's that box stove and its long, neglected decrepitude that I long to touch again the sad reminder of our brief time beside the river and our endless time underfoot. We're next to the old uh, hydro dam on McCraney here. Um, it was, it's not a hydroelectric dam, it's just a hydro dam, so it was used to control water flow to provide water for dams further down. Um, I don't think it's used anymore from what I understand. So you'd come in here at like the end of September and they'd open up the dam and the water levels would drop significantly on this lake. But uh, talking with Jeffrey, uh, I don't think they do it anymore. So. But uh, yeah, this is the, uh, this turn, this is where McCraney Creek begins. And uh, further downstream, it joins up with the Big East River. It flows out of the park. If you were to take the meanest link, this is the way you would come, is up here. But in 2011, we did the meanest link. Uh, we reopened a, an old historic portage. So we bushwhacked through here the portage that you saw us come through and down to Mink Falls, or Hoodlum Falls on Mink Creek. Uh, it's like toothpicks down there. You definitely don't want to be coming up the creek with a canoe on your head. That's crazy. It's silly. It's absolutely nuts down there. So as hard, as tough as that hill was to climb, it's probably a lot better than coming up that creek. So if you're paddling around, you'll probably see a significant number of like dead uh, cedar trees, like cedar tree stumps surrounding the lake shore and. That's because the uh, dam has raised the water levels. Maybe even before this dam was put in, there might have been another dam for logging purposes where they raised the water levels to uh, shoot logs down the creek and onto the Big East River. I don't know the logging history of this area of the park, but I would assume that's what it was because this lake was flooded in a man-made manner. So a lot of dead trees around this lake. So one time the water level was naturally much lower. Yeah, and there's very, a tower. Very great. Yeah. It's got a door to it too. Oh. And it's locked. Damn. So Old like? weather station. Pretty cool. I don't know who operated it or why or when or for how long or when it was shut down, but this is it. That's all I know about it. Is that a solar panel up there? It looks like there's one or something like that. Where's this cable run to? There's a cable here, it's running. Runs here, keeps going. Keeps going. Oh, there's that runs to nowhere. Bzzz. 
Yeah, so we're, uh, we're on the 1165 meter portage to Clara Lake, and we're just up from McCraney, like, I don't know, 60 meters, if that. And uh, there's a little stream that comes down from the beaver pond up there. Actually, I think this is, comes down from Clara Lake. I'm not entirely sure. Um, anyways, uh, this stream has a number of little cascading falls. It's very pretty. Um, I've never seen it this high though before, so this is nice. I think I'm gonna get out my camera. <laughs> He's shooting some video. Put it on the screen, put it on a speaker, something at home, and I have trouble sleeping. It works. It helps, it works, so. That's not enough. We gotta put more in there. Yeah, that's it. Need to go. Roll it up. This was one of the places. He and I had had uh, a history together in Algonquin Park that has, you know, of more than 50 years. We uh, went places in the park that few people have gone. Uh, this was one of those examples, and it just seemed right to to be there with the people who enjoyed being with John and who John enjoyed being with to remember him. This is day 10. Um, we're just trying to pack up and get out of here. I didn't make breakfast this morning. Uh, Jeffrey did. Oatmeal. I made water. <laughs> he cooked some water. Um, 
Matt didn't get his pancakes. Sorry. I didn't make his pancakes this trip. If we had a rest day, uh, I probably would have done it. I think yesterday was a rest day, but we made uh, those delicious uh, back bacon, or pimeo bacon and uh, cheese sandwiches for breakfast. That was, couldn't resist. So, um, yeah, so we're just going to pack up, paddle up the lake, do the portage, and, uh, you know, load up our cars and go home. Uh, out day is always uh, yeah, so we have a selection of exciting, but it's also a little bit depressing. You know, you don't want to leave, but at the same time, you're excited to go home and oh, see your family again and enter the real world, see what's going on. But at the same time, it's like it's a little bit sad that I have to leave such a wonderful place and uh, know that life goes on here without me. It's just uh, I'm, I'm really going to miss this place. But I'll be back up again next week. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, and then I'll be coming up again in October as well. Maybe, I don't know if I'm going to be able to sneak a trip in this November, but we'll see what happens. Um, but yeah, it's been a really exciting trip, and I think uh, the end of the trip was probably the best part, meeting old canoe friends and uh, celebrating the life of a, a dear friend that has moved on. And uh, it's been a great trip. Nowhere. 18 years old, two boys on their first canoe trip. The end of another long day, they sit alone, shoulder to shoulder, on a knob of rock at the edge of camp. Girls paddle by and stop to ask them, where have you come from? I don't know. Where are you going? Nowhere. All these years, I've paddled thousands of miles since age 13. How did these two beginners get there ahead of me? It's 5 a.m. and I won't sleep tonight. The bed's too wide without you by my side. When you are here, it's all so clear. 